Hello everyone and welcome back to another True Crime Time with Junebug. That's me. And it's been a hot second because <laughs> I got pharyngitis again last week. I love it. Now, I'm going to try to make this quick because last time it just did not work. I had to... There's a big fly in here. That's part of the reason Rocket's now um, shut in the upstairs bathroom is because he is going apeshit trying to get the fly. Um, and also just trying to beat up his sister who's politely sitting on this kitty perch and he's trying to eat the cords, it's just anything and everything he's doing. <laughs> so he's just going to be shut in the bathroom while I film this. Anyway, today I mentioned in the last video that we are talking about a case that's pretty well known. Like I had heard of it and I don't always know like you probably saw that big fly. I don't always know the most like I don't I miss a lot of stuff when it comes to like mainstream media. I'm just it just goes over my head but I had heard of this. So today we are talking about the sorry if I always that fly is huge. I think it's a horse fly. Today we are talking about the Gruber family and that there's six of them. Well there's five family members and then one who wasn't related but living with them, we'll, we'll get to it. And this takes place March 31st of 1922. So we're going, we're going back again. Now the ages, I always tell the ages in case anything with children bothers you, but the age range is two to 72. So there's a 70 year range there. So just wanna throw that out there. I also wanna say in advance, there's a lot of German names and I don't think I'm gonna pronounce them all correctly. I'm gonna try my best, but girl, it's not gonna be good. <laughs> but this takes place in Weidhofen, Bavaria, Germany. And unfortunately, this is a, oh this is an unsolved case. Now, if you're familiar with the details of this case, you probably heard the Gruber family and Six and realize we are in fact talking about the Hinterkaifeck murders. Now, the Hinterkaifeck murders are what is one of the cases that creeps me out and scares me the most obviously all of them scare me on some level because you know it's crime but this one just gives me extra heebie-jeebies and we could talk more about that later before i give too much away but to start for the pop culture references there are multiple documentaries there's been books and films that have been made about this through the years obviously because this takes place 102 years ago wow and I do want to know a lot of them have been made in Germany. Like a lot of them are in, they're speaking German. So probably not a ton that like us American folk have seen. Now in 2006, the novel Tanned came out by Andrea Maria Schenke and it became a film in 2009, which was based off of this. In 2017, the last chapter of The Man from the Train discusses the case and deals with one of the suspects. And in 2018, it was the subject of season two, episode three of the show Lore, which I haven't heard of, but it's a show. And in February 2016, so pushing 10 years ago already, uh, BuzzFeed Unsolved did a short video on this. And I'm talking very short. It was before like Shane was involved. It's like four or five minute videos. This is gonna be longer than that. So I'm sorry <laughs> if you want that short version Go watch that one. But let's get into it. So the farm, the Hinterkaifeck farm was built about 1863, 1863. I believe it's the same family that's always owned it. I don't 100% know. Now who was living here at the Hinterkaifeck farms? So there was Andreas Gruber, who was 63. His wife, Kezilia, Kezilia Gruber, who was 72. Their widowed daughter, Victoria Gabriel, who was 35. Her kids, Victoria's kids, Kezilia, who was seven, and Joseph or Yosef, who was two. And then there was also the maid who lived with them, Maria Baumgartner, who was 44. Now, I don't really know much about the family up until this point. I obviously, Victoria lost her husband, we know that, considering she's a widow. I also saw speculations, I don't know if any of these are 100% true, 
that Andreas was a bit abusive towards the family, especially Victoria. And it's also speculated that Andreas, Victoria's father, is also the father of her daughter. That unfortunately seems like that's more legit than I would like it to be. But again, I don't think there's anything 100% proving uh, little Kezelia is his daughter as well. But there is definitely incest rumors and maybe confirmations surrounding this family. Just, just to warn you. So I don't know if any of these things are 100% true, but they are heavily speculated. Now, like I said, I didn't know a ton about the family up until this point, but we do know about six months prior to this event, which I'll talk about, um, there was some odd things going on around the farm. The previous maid, she quit due to thinking the house was haunted because there was weird sounds coming from the attic, which if you had to live with them and it was creepy, I could see how you might want to quit. But they actually, other members of the family, heard footsteps coming from the attic. So, Andreas, the man of the household, the, the dad in this family, he actually would check the attic and he didn't find anyone or anything up there, but they did hear footsteps in their attic. They also found a newspaper from Munich, Munich in their home and uh, they, they didn't live there. Uh, it was miles away. So it wasn't their newspaper and it wasn't any of their neighbors. And days before the event, footprints were found in the snow to the farm's machine room, but they never found any footprints leading back out, which gives me the heebie-jeebies. I, I hate it. Now, Andreas and the family would discuss some of these happenings around the farm, but like with the neighbors, and the neighbors seemed concerned, like you should probably tell the police or do something, but Andreas, like, nothing was really reported. And uh, that was probably a mistake because late March 31st, or very early April 1st, depending on the time, everyone in and on the farm was murdered. All six of them. All of them murdered one night. However, no one would know everyone was murdered until four days later. That's when their neighbor like a fellow farmer, Lorenz Schlittenbauer, would send his sons over to see if they could find anyone. When the boys didn't, they came back, told their dad, and Lorenz and two other men would go over to investigate. And when they investigated, they would find the bodies of Andreas, Kezilia, Victoria, and little Kezilia stacked on top of each other in the barn. And then they would find the bodies of Maria and baby Yosef in the house. I also want to note, this was Maria's first day on the job. What a day! First and last day, might I add. Now, why did this discovery take so long? And I use quotations because there's been many instances where people don't realize someone's passed at their home like for months, maybe even in extreme years or, again, weeks. Four days was a lot solely because one is a whole family and a maid, but there were coffee sellers who like were going to see if they wanted a new order. Like I think that was just a thing back then and no one would answer. So they just left. Now little Kazelia, remember she's seven. So she was in school. She didn't show up to school and she was missing for days. There was never any like excuse or note sent why she was missing either and they did not show, show up for Sunday worship, which, especially back then, that was a big thing. Also, I'm a bit disturbed by this a little bit, but a repairman was also there to like fix an engine of theirs for the farm. He didn't see anyone there, like walked around, couldn't find anyone, but he repaired the engine anyway. So he was there five and a half hours, didn't see anyone, and he just left when he was done. I mean, he's dedicated to his craft, but I would have gotten a bit suspicious. 
So with all these things, it would seem like maybe they would notice a bit sooner that this family isn't doing so hot. But the reason, which another reason this case gives you the heebie-jeebies, the killer or killers moved in and lived in their home for three days. They ate the food in the house, they took care of the animals for them, and they would have fires going in the house so there was smoke coming out of their chimney making it look like someone was home. The audacity to kill an entire family and their poor maid on her first day and then just live there, eat their snacks, take care of their livestock, and just burn their wood? How rude, to put it lightly. But it's just like, you're, you're okay with killing a whole family, but that cow can't go hungry. The, um, the priorities seem to be backwards. And I mean, obviously, feed your livestock and everything, but I think you see the point I'm trying to make. But I could also see it just being as a way to throw people off. So, what happened? Well, it... Investigators believed the weapon was a Matic. And I do want to know, this weapon was found nearly a year later in the attic. It was not found right away. They thought the four family members found in the barn had been lured there one by one to be killed. And they thought little Kazelia, the seven-year-old, Victoria's daughter, was most likely alive for hours after the assault, which, horrible. And I don't know, like, what order she was in that stack of family members' bodies. I don't know if she was just, like, slowly suffocated. I, in between, like, her mom and grandma or something, which is just horrible to think about. But they did speculate she was alive for a while after the assault. And then it's believed by investigators that after they couldn't lure the other two in the house, they went into the house and killed Maria and baby Yosef. It was actually originally suspected to be a very intense robbery, like why people broke in and killed them. Now, police, because of this, interrogated many traveling craftsmen, salesmen, vagrants, etc. in the area to see if they found, saw anything, or if possibly they did it. But that idea was dropped when a very large amount of money was found in the house. Like, no money was taken. So, probably not a robbery. So, with robbery off the table, the fact the suspects, or suspect, had lived, quote-unquote, normal lives for a few days at the house, and that many people had come and gone from the crime scene, like, bodies were moved, items were also moved, meals were made there, either by the suspects or people who were just, like, there after the fact the bodies were found, the police were having a hard time drawing a conclusion. So, doesn't appear to be a robbery. People lived there. Things were tampered with. It's like crime scene was not pure up to the standard it should be. So they were kind of like, uh. Now I do want to know, autopsies were performed in the barn the day after their discovery. And their skulls were all taken to be sent to Munich for further um, research, like into how they died. Um, why all their skulls? Don't quite know. But unfortunately, um, it was said the skulls, all six of them, were lost in World War II. Um, and they've literally never been found. Don't know what happened to the, all six of those skulls. So that means um, the family and Maria was all left headless when they were buried. How do you lose six skulls? How do you lose six whole heads? Like what? Like I get World War II was a lot. Um, a lot of shit going on and it was, this is Germany. And obviously they had, they had some stuff going on in World War II, but it's just like, did you ex, did someone accidentally throw away all their heads? I. I don't know. We don't know. Their heads are gone.
got no further information from them unfortunately so we don't really know why it was done necessarily so they're turning to suspects like who did this uh and to make a long story short uh no one knows but there have been quite a few suspects through the years so let's get into those and i do want to note there's like eight main ones i will cover them all there's other suspects throughout the years, but these are like the eight main ones, which that's, that's quite a few. So let's start with Carl Gabriel. Now, he was Victoria's husband. Hang on, I know what you're thinking. Isn't she a widow? Yes. <laughs> Let me explain, because I was also confused. It was thought he died in December of 1914 in World War I. During a, it was a shell attack in France. But... His body was never found. Also, knowing when he died proved Yosef wasn't his son. And it always was kind of speculated whether he actually did die during the war, war or if he ran away to Russia is the theory. So he either truly did die or he ran away to Russia. It was also said by little Kazelia, who debated whether her dad is Carl or her grandpa, but her mom, so Victoria, the night before the murders, Victoria had fled the farm after a violent quarrel and she was found hours later in, in the forest. Now, did this have something to do with Carl, perhaps? We don't know, but like the motive behind it could be family drama, like maybe he had some beef with Victoria, um, mad that Kazilia wasn't really his, also with Yosef. There wasn't a ton that seemed to ground this theory, but I could see where it could possibly come into play. Now, the second main suspect, who I think is definitely more suspicious than our first one, is Lorenz Schlittenbauer, who was, as you remember, the neighbor. Now, it's a big theory. It may have been proven. Again, I'm not 100% sure with the legitimacy of some of these statements when it comes to this case. But it's a big theory that, oh, <laughs> you can see Dinky. It's a big theory that Lorenz and Victoria had a relationship and that he was actually Yosef's father. Which again, if her husband truly did die in 1914, I, I don't see a reason why she can't obviously move on and have a child with someone else. But they weren't married. He was also the first one to find the bodies after the murders. Yeah, he was the first one to find the bodies after being the first one to investigate the house. Like, to be suspicious, like, send his sons over there. So he was the first one in both situations. He also had a key to the house, which isn't crazy, but a house key had gone missing days before the murders. He also went to search the house on the farm alone. He wanted to go alone, even though others were with him. Apparently, it said that he was looking for his son, Yosef, his son, quote unquote, because again, no geology test was, not geology, genealogy test was performed. Now, I don't know if he meant the baby Yosef, or he also had a stepson named Yosef. So I don't know which Yosef he is, Joseph Yosef he's referring to. Now, he also is said to have disturbed the bodies at the scene, like, move them so that could that led to part of the investigation being compromised like the crime scene being compromised also it just seems that many locals thought he did it which if he didn't that's very rude but i also want to point out remember the big fight victoria had the night before the murders if she and lorenz had maybe a strained relationship i could see the fight maybe being included like being a motive for this so his motive would probably be like, again, maybe family drama. Maybe he just hated his neighbors. Um, it's theorized maybe he didn't want to financially support Victoria and baby Yosef if it was his son. Things along those lines. Again, nothing solid. Like all these people are dead at this point. So there's no, <laughs> there's no really questioning them anymore. So I think Lorenz is quite a big suspect in my head. But let's get into more. So our third main suspects 
are Adolf and Anton Gump. So Adolf was part of the Freikorps Oberland, which fought against communists and Polish insurgents, uh, meaning Adolf most likely participated in the murder of nine farmers in Upper Silesia in 1921, so a year prior. Uh, apparently there was a Polish uprising there that they did not like, so they killed them, I guess. They were looked into in 1951 because on their sister's deathbed, she said they did it, the Hinterkaifeg murders. But Adolf had uh, already died in 1944, and nothing could prove Anton was involved at all. So that kind of led nowhere. I guess their motive could be their family was maybe Polish. They just like crime. I, I don't know. I don't put like a lot of merit in this theory, but what do I know? Clearly nothing or else this case would be solved. <laughs> now the fourth main suspects are Carl and Andreas S. They were brothers and a woman in 1971, so almost 50 years later, remembered when she was young that her mom had a visit with the mom of the brothers, Carl and Andreas. And that mom claims that her sons were the murderers at Hinterkaifeg. She said her son Andreas lost his penknife when it happened and he was bummed about that, out of all things. And a penknife was found a year later on the property, Hinterkaifeg property. Now the former maid, because she's obviously still alive, but the former maid said she had saw had seen this penknife before, and again, this leads this lead basically led nowhere. And a potential motive, I have no freaking idea. Now, the fifth main murder suspect is Peter Weber. Now, he was named a suspect by a guy named Josef Betz. Another Josef, he's a different one. And Josef worked with Peter between 1919 and 1920, and they shared a room for their work. Like, I think they lived like on a job. They lived at the job, essentially. Now, Betts, Yosef, would say Weber said that Weber would talk about the farm a lot. He also would talk about how they should kill the old man and take his money. Now, Yosef didn't respond to any of this because he didn't want to kill people and Peter ended up just stopped talking about it. The theory was never proven and it didn't go anywhere either. But the motive would be money based off of that statement if it was confirmed to be true. Now this one's a bit longer, but the six main, six main suspects are Mitch, the Bichler bros, the Br Bichler brothers, and George Siegel, not the actor. Now the former maid, again, she's popping up, she suspected these brothers and their names were Anton and Carl, another Anton, I'm sorry, and another Carl. And here's why she suspected them. So Anton helped with potato harvesting on the farm. So he knew like the lay of the land and just how things were on the farm. He knew the premises. Now they would talk about, the brothers would talk about the family often with her. Uh, apparently Anton said the family out to be dead which I don't know why he would say that, and that's not something you should say. She also said she once spoke to a stranger through her window at night, and she believes it was Carl. I don't know how that necessarily ties in, but it, it does when I was doing research, I guess. She thinks the brothers teamed up with George Siegel, or Seigel, who had also worked on the farm and knew about the family's money. Now this has never been proven, but George was said to have broken in and stolen some stuff from the family in November of 1920. George had also carved the handle of the weapon that was used to murder the family. He also knew where that weapon was kept, which doesn't sound very good for George. And again, nothing came from this theory. Nothing was done. Motive seems to be money, maybe revenge if there was bad working conditions or something. Don't really know. I do think there's a bit more merit to this one, especially with he carves the murder weapon, like the handle himself, and he knew where it was. So I could see a bit more motive to that. And there's generally people who are in your life 
and if they've worked there and know the premises, I could see how this had has a bit more merit to it. Now, the seventh main suspects main suspects are the Thaler brothers. They were also suspected by the former maid. She's just naming off brothers, I guess. Like there's no tomorrow. And here's why she thought it was possibly them as well. They had committed crimes in the area before. It was mainly robbery, though no like murders that we're aware of. And one of the brothers, another one named Yosef, they need to get more names back then. Apparently Yosef, one of the brothers, stood at her window at night, again, and asked about the family. Uh, she, she didn't whisper any answers back to him through the window. She, she seems to get a lot of visitors at night to her window. Maybe she should shut it. Yosef, one of the brothers, also claimed to know where everyone slept in the house, which is creepy. And he knew they had money. Again, though, I sound like a broken record. This left it led to nothing. And the motive is, again, money and maybe just liking crime if they've committed robberies before. Get a kick out of it. I, I don't know. This one, I don't have doesn't seem as likely as the previous brothers she named, but again, we can't ask them any more questions. And the last main suspect, the eighth one, is Paul Mueller. Now, he is the newest suspect added to the list, and he was mentioned in the book at the beginning of the midi video. Now, Paul was a German, German migrant, so he is from Germany, so that does make sense for this case. Now, why they think it's him is because Apparently, he was the only suspect in an 1898 murder of a Massachusetts family, the whole family. He is believed to have killed dozens of other people in the U.S. And his suspected murders are very similar to the crime at Hinterkaifeck, such as um, killing the entire family, using a blunt edge of a farm weapon, stacking and moving, moving and stacking the victim's bodies in absence of robbery, just straight up murder. It was also thought he returned to Germany by 1912 when he was worried about getting caught by authorities here in the U.S. when things were starting to be put together about his potential crimes and just believed he could just carry on his crimes once he came back to Germany. Now the motive seems to be um, just he likes crime I guess because he didn't take the money if it was him. So don't really know. And I know that was a lot to throw at you, but those are the main eight suspects. None of them stand out a ton to me, except for maybe the neighbor. The husband, Victoria's husband, sounds a bit too movie-like, if that makes sense. Like, too much of a plot twist that someone would throw into a movie. But I, I know that they say reality is crazier than fiction or whatever the saying is. None of these, I mean, there were arrests, but no one was ever like ch charged or sentenced for this crime, crimes. But let's get into the aftermath. So as mentioned earlier, all of them were buried without their heads. And we know what happened with the heads. They just lost them, all six of them. And the family was all buried together in Friedhof Weidhofen, Friedhof Weidhofen in Bavaria, Germany. I'm sorry how I pronounced that. And I saw that Maria was buried with them, possibly? Um, I can't 100% confirm this, but her name is also on the headstone. Now, less than a year after the murders, the farm was completely demolished, and a place marker is there now. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the murder weapon was found at this time when the farm was being demolished. The case files went cold and were closed in 1955, so 33 years after the crime, and the last interrogation took place in 1986, so 64 years after the crime. And unfortunately, the case has never been solved, and it's most likely never going to be solved. Anyone who could have done it could have possibly done it is long gone at this point. And it's now been 102 years since this whole family was murdered. And Maria. And that is it. That is the Hinterkaifeck case. 
uh, it's a lot, especially with how many suspects there are. Not as much about the actual, like, family and the crime, but it's just a lot I found on suspects. Which, I mean, you gotta try to find who did it, obviously, but they didn't. Yeah, this one just creeps me out. I don't like the fact that, especially if it was a random person, that they're like, you know what? That whole family's gotta go. Like, who... I don't even understand murder if it's just one person, but like a whole family, everyone on a farm, that's, no, don't do that. And it's just also the, it seemed like the um, perpetrator was almost living in their attic beforehand with like the footprints in the snow too, certain places, but never coming back and just, the missing keys and the footsteps it is just also the fact it's unsolved it's also maybe the black and white photos adds another eeriness it, this case just gets under my skin i don't like it i don't think anyone likes it but i i think you know what i mean nor do i like any of the cases i cover but i couldn't do research too late at night for this so let me know what you think who do you think out of these eight main suspects is possibly the killer or do you have another theory that I totally missed which is very possible there are many theories uh I don't know what I'm covering next I'm going back and forth between two things so you'll just have to wait and see I guess sorry this is a longer video there's a lots of suspects as you just heard but thank you for tuning in let me know who you think could have possibly done it and why uh Sorry, that sounded too much like a school question. Just let me know who you think. You don't have to say why. You don't even have to use a complete sentence if you don't want. This is YouTube. <laughs> anyway, thank you and see you next time. Bye guys.